When I completed the GAD39 airbrush test in the previous videos, I used this Tamiya Jeep and the gallery really liked what I had done. And so I had some other projects to paint and they'd reached out to me. We started some discussions on this and they said, hey, we'd love to see what you do with our other airbrushes. So they sent me out the GAD68 and the GAD98D, um, which will be in a separate video, but I wanted to really test out the 68 first because I haven't had a pistol trigger airbrush in my repertoire of tools in a very long time. Uh, I have previous experience in prior to scale modeling using HVLP style air guns and they do sit differently in the hand and when you open up the box obviously it's the box is bigger it's heavier the, the handle is heavier there's there's the balancing uh, situation in the hand where it, as it as it rests in your hand and how you move your wrist and how you move your arm it's different to your kind of standard trigger style of airbrushes that we're familiar with in the scale model hobby so I really wanted to kind of see what that was like because I haven't used one in a long, long time. And I, and, you know, I think there are other competitors on the market like Rex and stuff that have, that provide that to us. And even Iwata has some of these and, and so on and so forth. But again, for me, I've always stuck with the standard triggers uh, with my airbrushing. Mostly for the simple reason that I think for scale model work for the size that I particularly work in, you know, 35th and smaller typically uh, across the board, the standard trigger airbrushes fit that need really really well there's there hasn't been a requirement for this style of big pistol trigger airbrush and when i hold it as you can see here on screen i run my index finger down the side of it and then i use my middle finger for the trigger pull and then when you pull back on the trigger you get a little bit of that that first part of the travel about a quarter inch or so of the airflow and then it pulls back into the paint release and that's a different kind of kind of uh, the muscle memory that we're used to. So you have to kind of adapt yourself to that. You have to practice that a little bit. Um, and then when I go through this, this priming stage here, I do a tan primer first for the tires, uh, which replicates kind of my light to dark conversation with rubber painting. And then I'll go into a, a red primer conversation with the, the actual model itself in a few minutes here in this video. But I want to showcase in particular again to repeat and to reinforce, uh, you know, the cleaning, the breakdown, what this airbrush is about, because that's the purpose of these particular videos and to showcase kind of what gallery has provided for the for the hobby because they are trying to increase their reach and marketing towards promotions and scale modeling in the in the greater com uh, conversation on a global scale so that I respect that and I'm here to help and they you know this is a collaborative effort and that's to be transparent for everybody understanding that that, that I did buy the GAD 39 and then they did send me these two in, in response so it's an important note because what I think is really the importance here is the quality of the spraying. The one thing that's really stood out to me in the, in the first month or so of, of now three airbrushes in my stable uh, that are not Iwatas, that are not Tommy airbrushes, the thing that stands out to me, and, it, and you see a little bit with the tires, but you're gonna see it on display here uh, with this stage of the red primer painting is the smoothness. You can see it on the paper towel here. The way that paint comes out, the way I, it kind of flows here as I make my, my pressure adjustments for the main painting, which is an important tip for any kind of airbrushing. This is why I always recommend the MAC valves on your airbrushes uh, to ensure that you have the right combination of, of factors involved so that when you hold your piece, however you're going to do it, however you're going to spray your, mark, your parts, that's the right setup for you. And that's the most important part in terms of getting the success out of that. Because the thing I'm seeing here on screen and I saw, you know, obviously I was feeling it through my hand. I was feeling it over the model. Uh, all of this while I was filming is, is you can see the blend of the color there, the, the, the smoothness, that gradation in the paint. And this is a primer, by the way, and it's sprayed with the 0.5 needle. Uh, but that gradation that I'm seeing there in the color transitions over the plastic and the color that I'm putting down is remarkable. And that was what's really impressive, especially right across this hood. It is that is as baby butt smooth as, as I've sprayed in, in as, as long as I can remember. I mean, that is a nice, even coat of primer going down. And that, to me, even above the GAD 39, which really impressed me. And if you go back and watch those here, um, you know, you can see that I was super impressed at that point in time. And that's a $45 airbrush setup. And this one's a little bit more expensive because I think there's more complicated, you know, manufacturing involved, of course, and so it's a little bit of a higher price point. But I think the quality, the durability, the, the response from that was exactly as my, my interpretation was going to be now because I'd already used one of their products, so I want to use another one at, at their recommendation, said, you know, which again, to, to be honest with that, was like, a, typically don't do that. I don't like to do that for, for RSP because I like to, to purchase and go after things that I find will, will do the best job for me. So when this was sent to me, 
I kind of had a good feeling from the 39 testing that the 68 is going to be a really cool brush to use. And frankly, I was even more impressed with even that elevated expectation level. And that 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 says something like when you watch and spray this and then I come in and just kind of doodle on the paper towel again just to kind of showcase the hand motion. It is it is different to the standard trigger. You have to get a little bit used to it in the hand and the help, but it just it's so smooth. And I couldn't get past that. And, and if you have that with an airbrush, especially for scale modeling, uh, the things we can do with this now, uh, not that I couldn't before, but it was it's noticeable here. And, and perhaps it's an age thing. Perhaps it's a new thing and not to be overly glowing because I'm, I'm being a little bit, you know, cautious myself with this. But at the same time, I'm still, the things I'm sensing and feeling in, within the airbrushes themselves, now that I have three of them, and I have sprayed the 98D uh, in between. So that video itself is going to be coming up here on the channel pretty soon. But at the same time, everything between the 39, the 68, and the 98, particularly, they're all very smooth. And I think that that's a credit to Gallery, uh, their effort here with the, with the, the nozzle design. Um, airbrushes are all kind of made the same. You know, there's kind of this whole conversation. There's a few of them that are a little bit more unique, but the fundamental principles of, of manufacturing an airbrush fall along um, kind of that same engineering principles at play. So the variations are really subtle and you don't notice that until you actually are using them. And in the, I would say probably, what would you guys think? Maybe the last two, three years? I don't know, you let me know in the comments down below what you feel on this, but it seems to me that the quality of, of Chinese produced airbrushes in particular have really escalated to uh, quality levels that we're comfortable with here, at least from those of us familiar with the Iwatas, the Badgers, the the heart of steambacks et cetera et cetera like the, the the standards that we are familiar with but those standards we pay considerably more money for and that is of course the value conversation which is important and it is a big deal for scale modelers because we tend to be a lot more value focused as a collective and that's that's part of this this greater you know discussion on 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 you know when you buy airbrushes because some of you here watching this might never have done this some of you watching this might have been airbrushing for 20 years so it's 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 everybody in between and it's a big deal so and also by the way i should make note too the captions are here to inform you on what's actually happening on screen too so if you need information on the colors and the products that i'm using and you know i, I provide that with a caption so i can have a, a little bit more of an in-depth uh voiceover when i do these videos that way i can kind of kill two birds with one stone versus trying you know this video isn't about me spraying all of drought this time <laughs> well i mean we can get into that soon and we will because in the in the yak 98 video coming up we're going to spray a sand uh british desert and we're going to do a two-tone with the with the red brown over that uh using the gak 98 airbrush so this is this is kind of an ongoing project now it's turned into uh, which is really fun and to reinforce why i feel in saying that is important and emphasizing that part of this is the airbrushing here is going really well. Again, there is the new airbrush part of it, but I'm feeling in the airbrushes myself, just from my experience, that I feel like the quality is built into this. The gallery has done a really solid job with their engineering, with their manufacturing, with their tolerances, their choice of, of, of a lot of the O-rings and the Teflon seals, the multiple nozzle needle setup, the way the trigger pulls back, the spring tension, these kind of nuances of airbrushing you know and that's kind of where my experience comes into handy and you guys can take that as a, a trusted comment in that regard where when i pull back on the airbrush and i and i do have my other airbrushes next to me i kind of quickly swap between them just to see okay am i feeling the right thing and it just has been now with three of them the answer is yes and i like that part of this it's a it makes it fun it brings the fun part of of this into airbrushing why because you're going to see here when i spray the olive drab down it's even more impressive with than it was with the primer. And this is the 0.38 millimeter uh, nozzle needle too. So I did that swap there on, on screen for you guys too while I was talking. But it, I mean, even on the paper towel, okay, usually, okay, whatever, but that's smooth. You can see how smooth this is coming out. And here it is, as I spray these first passes with the olive drab, it's a tough coverage, number one. It's a, that's a green over red. They don't like each other. Uh, that's, that's color theory 101. And so the smoothness, the opacity, the evenness of which I'm able to control this over complicated forms of the of the truck chassis, of the Jeep chassis. You know, these are I chose I chose that for that reason for now to see how it performs in a more difficult situation before I get into kind of you know aircraft and, and 
maybe larger armor part pieces that have a lot more uh, surface area smoothness to deal with. But if it can perform here nicely, as it's going to do right across this hood, beautiful. I mean, that is just, that is remarkable what I'm seeing there. And you can see the blend is almost imperceptible. That gradation is fantastic. And that's coming from the airbrush. And yeah, it, it, you guys have heard me promote the Mission Models painting and priming before. And they, you know, it's an excellent product to begin with. So it will perform beautifully with this but it is performing to a level higher than what I'm seeing with my other airbrushes. So I feel that this, this Pitch Trigger Airbrush one is a great alternative and or second or third airbrush for those of you in the experienced crowd that are looking for, that's what I had the 39 for, and then they sent me the 68, and it's even better. So if you have a few more dollars, I recommend the 68 is kind of your main primer slash base coat airbrush for all matter of, of painting. However, with the 0.5 and the 0.38 sizes, it is going to be mostly for your kind of anything bigger than what I have on, on, on hand here. Even though, look, I'm, I'm spraying down some, some quick paint, uh, primer and paint on the tires too, and doing some small print painting. And you can see here, again, on screen, that is just beautiful quality of, of, of just the, the paint going down. You know, I'm, I'm doing it kind of, I always do really simple kind of processes. You know, I don't even have to pull out my little Gorilla Clips or anything. I just put on a piece of cardboard with some double side tape and go, you know. So you know me, I'm pretty efficient with, and pretty brutal with kind of, I'm, I get right to it. And if that output there, and you can see that Jeep sitting there on, on camera quietly, it's remarkable. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. And then the cleaning procedure, which I, I do for, you know, <laughs> The purposes of everybody watching that it's it, we have to reinforce our, our our chores you know coach is adamant about that uh I've, I've gotten even better with that because of all the filming i do and have to remind myself to showcase proper techniques with you guys all the time uh, you know it's critical so it's 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 a nice thing uh, the cleaning goes well part removal replacement assembly is, is beautiful the trigger pull is nice and even smooth you know i'm ready to go so thank you to gallery for sending this one out to me we'll do the gac 98 uh, dual setup here in the future uh, on the channel we have to do uh, like I said it's going to turn this Jeep into a British SAS kind of recon North Africa coming up really soon so stay tuned for that thank you to my patrons for their awesome support and we'll see you on the next one uh, I suggest you go grab some pretty cool link in the description thank you later bye see you okay I'm out peace